Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Moran. Here on my channel, I post lifestyle and university related content. So if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe and turn that notification bell to all so you don't miss a video. Whew. Okay, so here's an update. I finally heard from St. George's University London. If you are confused what I am on about, here's a quick recap. Received an email saying that my reference has been submitted to UCAS for St. George's. I just received an email from St. George's asking if I want to come to an interview. So today I had an interview with St. George's. Um, yeah, I'll do a whole video on my interview experiences. But, so I just got an email from them saying that it will take them within eight weeks to get back to me. All right, so you would seen where I left you off was me complaining that I hadn't heard back from them within the eight weeks that they said that I might hear back from them. Before I get into that, I just have to do a quick disclaimer. The reason I'm making this video is to update you guys and inform you guys on my experience in case it helps you with your experience with them. I am by no means dragging the name of the university. I am not telling you not to apply there because I applied there for various reasons. So it'd be wrong for me to jump on here and tell you don't apply to St. George's. So yeah, and watch to the end to find out what they said to me, whether I received an offer, whether I was wretched, so on and so forth, or whether I withdrew my off like my application. So yeah <laughs> that's basically the video um as i said i'm gonna share my experience and i may speak on some experiences of those people that i know that have given me permission to speak on their experience okay so i thought it'd be best for me to start off as to why i applied to st george's so then you could you know figure out whether you want to apply there or just yeah so as i said before i applied for the msc physiotherapy pre-reg degree there so what I say, you know, I don't know if this applies to the undergrad as well, but yeah. So the reasons I apply there is because it's a London-based university. If you don't know, I'm from London. So applying to a London-based university is kind of like a no-brainer for me. It means I save money. It means I know my way around, stuff like that. Why not, you know? Another reason why I applied to St. George's is because of its great reputation. It's a well-known medical school. Like everybody knows about St. George's. And on top of that, if you don't know about St George's as a uni as a whole, you know about St George's if you've watched 24 hours in A&E. You know. So, yeah, stuff like that. Another thing is the tuition cost. It was the cheapest one out of all the places I applied for because it's 9250 per year. Other places, it's more than that per year. So it was cheapest. That's another reason why I chose to apply there. A different reason why I chose to apply there is because they have a great access to, like, cadavers. Um, if you don't know what a cadaver is, it's like a dead body that someone's like given their body for science. Um, I like the fact that you have access to that because then you can learn anatomy, like actually how it will look rather than, you know, yeah, you can, you know, in classes you're feeling your classmate trying to figure out what things are, but actually seeing it, I feel like that would have helped me a lot with my learning rather than, you know, reading it from a textbook or just looking at someone else. So actually being able to see it firsthand was one of the reasons why I chose to apply there. Another reason is because like, other people who I've spoken to that have applied there, either through Unibuddy or other schemes like that, they have said that the course is very good there. I also really like the structure of the course there. So that appealed to me and made me choose to apply. And one of the last reasons why I chose to apply there is because when I sat in the virtual open day, they spoke about the placements and they've got various locations and a great range of placement sectors. So I feel like the knowledge I would have gained on their placements would have been perfect. I would have covered loads of bases rather than just the core. So that appealed to me and made me choose to apply to St. George's. Okay, so that's out of the way. I just want to speak about, like, let me give you the key dates. That's why I've got the laptop. I want to give you the good facts, okay? I don't want to, you know, do you wrong. As you saw in that recap, which I took from my University Reactions video, if you haven't seen that, check it out. I'll put it up in the cards and, you know, yeah, it's on my channel. Check it out, man. <laughs> yeah. You will know that on the 2nd of November, I submitted my application to St. George's. I think that was like the last application I submitted because I was chasing my tutor for my reference. And like, I just needed him to put it in UCAS basically. And I was chasing him for it. I finally got to submit it. So I was very happy because at this point, you know, St. George's, mm, okay. So I was like, yeah, St. George's on the brain. And then on the 2nd of, oh, no, the, yeah, sorry, 2nd of November I submit my application and on the 8th of December I was given an invite for an interview. So I was very happy about that. I was like, yeah, you know, this is great. You can't say no to that. So I had my interview on the 13th of January. 
if you want to hear more about my interview last weekend i posted a video speaking on my interview experiences i put that in the cards above as well but go check that out if you want a little bit more detail i couldn't give you the exact questions that i was asked in that just because of disclosure that i signed so yeah but check that out if you want a little bit more information about what you may be getting yourself into if you apply to st george's so yeah i had my interview on the 13th of january and after submitting my interview videos i received an email stating that they hope to get back to me like i think they said eight weeks within eight weeks they hope to get back to me so i'm like okay cool you know me i was thinking eight weeks would be perfect but i'm gonna give you like 10 weeks give or take you know what i mean we'll see what happens all right yeah no that didn't happen the eight week deadline from the 13th of january brought me to give or take the 10th of march the 10th of march i didn't hear anything I was a bit like, okay, what's happening? What's going on here? Because at this point, I had heard from every other place I applied for, like you would have seen in that video if you haven't watched it, like I said, check it out. I had heard from all the other universities at this point. So I'm thinking, what's the hold up, you know? So yeah, I'm like, you know, let me give them a little bit more time. So I give them until the 22nd of March. And on the 22nd of March, I, at this point, I was fed up because I was like, no one's communicated with me that's like i'll get into that later but um i had heard nothing from the university not even a random advertisement about the facilities the university had, had to offer like literally nothing from the university so i really wasn't happy about that personally so on the 22nd of march i decided to email admin so here's the email i sent to admin um what's it called so basically before i sent this email i was aware that when you like if you want your response to be given back to you you have to sign this um i think it's like internal disclosure form and if you haven't signed that form or completed it out they can't release your information to you like whether you've received an offer rejected or so on and so forth they can't receive that to, like give that out to you so i know i completed that the day before my interview the day of my interview and because they're taking long i completed it the day before i submitted this email just in case there was an error on my end or they misplaced it so on and so forth all right so the email I sent them, I said, Dear administration team, I'm emailing you today regarding the process, the progress, sorry, the progress of my application for the MSc Physiotherapy degree. On the 13th of January, after attending my remote MMI, I received an email stating that you'd hope to get back to me within eight weeks. I'm aware that if the internal disclosure form is not completed, the application decision cannot be released. Therefore, I completed the form again yesterday. However, also no, I said, I understand that the pandemic is likely to have impacted the typical application you know response rate however because i have not heard any contact right you know had any contact from the university since my interview regarding my application or just the general update of the reviewing process i decided to reach out to you is it possible for someone to provide me with an estimate of how much longer i may have to wait see in this email i thought let me be professional i'm not going to ask you outright could you give me my thingy because that's not fair on everybody else if they told me and they didn't tell everyone else. I just wanted to gauge like, you know, how much longer are you going to take? Like that, that's, that's all I wanted. I just wanted an answer because I hadn't heard anything. So that I was getting a little fed up there. Anyway, so come the 8th of April. So on the 8th of April, I received an email from the administration team. Basically what they told me in that administration the email, they said that the person who is in control of the course, like admin, like physio course admin they took unexpected leave now don't get me wrong i completely understand that you know we're in a pandemic people are taking unexpected leave here there whatever you know what i mean so i can't really be mad at that they said they're taking unexpected leave and they should be back next week and then i should be able to hear back within the next two weeks after that point as said the fact that someone takes unexpected leave isn't concerning to me and i'm not like oh my god that's so rude I'm just like, you know, I understand pandemic, people, you know, have to leave whenever they have to leave. One thing that did annoy me though is I'm like, at this point, I have been waiting how many weeks now to hear something? I don't need you to tell me, you know, the admin's business, like, oh, they took it off for this. It just would have been nice to have like a general email. It doesn't even have to be like personalized to me, just a general email being like, sorry, we are aware we that, you know, we said we get back to you guys within eight weeks. However, you know, admin has got all backlogged or, blah 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 just something some form of communication i would have felt more secure but at this point i'm not gonna lie 
up until after like the early the start of May no not May sorry March the start of March I'm, I don't know I'm all over the place today the start of March I was considering withdrawing my application because they were annoying me um but the things that kind of stopped me from doing it is that I was like hey you spent 21 pounds through UCAS and this is the only uni you have to apply for UCAS for so at 21 pounds you're going to listen to what they have to say so I did anyway come the end of April the 28th of April I finally heard a response yes yes I know this video is coming out on the 29th of May I am sorry it's a whole month later but I batch film as I've said before I batch film and the other videos had priority so I'm still bringing you the information so okay <laughs> um yeah basically I heard from them and what they said is that I did not receive an offer because basically the way they do the interviews is they give you a score with the interview. I didn't receive enough, like a high enough score to be offered an offer, basically. And I was fine with that. They said like, yeah, I didn't get a high enough score to be given an offer and that I should be happy that I had an interview because those people apply each year and some of them don't even make it to the interview stage. I was like, cool. At that point, I don't know why, but at first I thought I would be upset that I didn't get an offer from them because when I first started applying, they were the top university for me. But I think with the poor communication and just the lack of anything from them, they just dropped for me massively. So that brings me on to my, my I don't want to say complaints, but yeah, my complaints. Communication. The communication is like, it just wasn't it for me. Like, the thing with the other universities that I liked is even if I didn't really want to go there, they would even, they're not like to the point they're pestering you with like spam emails, but they'd email being like, oh, did you know that my university has these facilities? Did you know da 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 da? And then amongst like all of that, St. George's is saying nothing. So you can't help but be like, oh, this uni's saying this and they have that. I didn't know that. And St. George's is just sitting there like, my rep says it all. My reputation does it all for me. And I'm like, yeah, your reputation may do it all for you, but like, you know, Take your own horn occasionally you know what i mean like just hey i'm over here apply to me you want me to be your first uni like you know what i mean a little something i felt like would have been a good way to grab my attention but they kind of didn't take that approach another thing i'd say is that like like i said no one reached out to me to even give me any updates which was a real shame um the thing that kind of also annoyed me is the fact that i had to pay for the application don't get me wrong you pay for some applications for other universities but what annoyed me is the fact that if I pay for something, I expect good communication. Anyway, I'll just leave that as that. <laughs> but this isn't, honestly, like, this isn't the first time the communication has been whacked because I've spoken to other people. I had a friend who applied there, but for the, um, like, an undergrad course there. And their communication was poor. The university gave her an offer and then she was like, cool, cool, they gave her an offer. Then turned around and told her, actually, we put you on the waiting list, not for this year, for next year's course. Didn't inform her until like, you know, she chased it up to figure out she was on the waiting list. And I'm like, say if she rejected all the other offers she had because she wanted to go to you guys, only to find out actually she can't start with you guys until the next year. The communication, like, don't get me wrong, that happens sometimes. Courses can fill up really fast because I know universities tend to give out more offers than there are actually spaces. So then they can have a full course. Completely understand that. But just communicate that with people. She could have been in a sticky situation. Luckily, she's in a university and she's happy. Like, you know what I mean? And there's another occasion where I spoke to someone who actually studies there and I asked them about like, you know, what's up with the communication? Like, why am I, why is it taking so long? And they're like, yeah, this, this, they're notorious for it. And I'm like, I'm sorry, if you're notorious for it, don't you think it's something it should, like, it's something that should be fixed? It's something like that should be looked at? Like, don't get me wrong. This isn't the worst communication I've ever experienced with a university. Like, some of them are awful. I've had some awful experience with the university communication. But, like, it just kind of annoyed me because I'm kind of like, with the, at a university of your level, I'd expect more. <sighs> but, yeah, that was my experience with St. George's. I didn't receive an offer. And I'm kind of happy about it after the whole back and forth I had with them I don't know whether I would have taken an offer if I received an offer from them amongst the other offers I received but yeah 
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I will catch you guys in the next video. In the meantime, go check out last week's video, other videos I've posted. You know, come here, stay here, drain. But yeah, bye guys.